and pray. Okay, Nicholas, up to you. Thank you. So, hello, all. I'm Nicholas Blasis, another economist from University of Aberdeen, that's France. So I think my talk is going to uh, build a bridge between uh, uh, the first talk, Matthias' talk, and uh, uh, France' talk. So hopefully it will connect the two. So I'm going to talk about the impact of uh, carbon offsetting on biodiversity and communities, the economic aspect of it, of course, and leakage. Uh, so natural based offset can be can have positive and negative externalities uh, both to the biodiversity and local communities and in terms of biodiversity why you, we care as economists because of course uh, it is uh, related automatically to economic growth uh, and with local communities uh, local communities are massively affected by the nature based offsets Regarding positive externalities and negative externalities, so by carbon offsets, we can increase biodiversity in a specific targeted area. On the other hand, uh, we can have, if we're not careful, a negative externality, so we can decrease that. And uh, through, for example, the use of uh, non-appropriate monoculture practices. Uh, what is important here to notice is that the carbon stock of plant is not exactly uh, linked uh, one hundred percent to the uh, it, it's important in terms of biodiversity, so they too might move in opposite directions. Regarding local communities, we can have positive effects through employment and promoting economic growth. Uh, but on the other hand, and it is report and as it is reported by many uh, offset uh, carbon offset projects they might undermine uh, local land right, rights or potentially putting indigenous uh, people at risk. How we can correct that in terms of uh, uh, economics and designing the market? At the minimum, any natural-based solution should not harm local communities and biodiversity. Uh, this is not always straightforward as most uh, carbon offsets are designed to focus on the carbon aspect of them. So they do not internalize the externalities, positive or negative, they generate to other, uh, to biodiversity and local communities. So the market, uh, the market solution will be to try to quantify that and building uh, and bundling it uh, in, uh, along with the carbon, uh, the, 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 uh, the focus on carbon offset of uh, of these projects. Another way is to uh, separate the two markets, so create two different markets, one for the carbon offset, one for the uh, different uh, elements of those carbon offsets, so having two different prices. And for the non-quantifiable effects is to allocate some tokens uh, or credits uh, or labels as credit uh, signals. So Moving along to the leakouts, first by definition of leakouts, uh, I don't think I need to spend too much time in explaining what's leakout. Uh, Matia, the uh, she already explained quite well uh, what is that uh, quite clearly. So, carbon leakout occurs when actions uh, aiming to uh, emission reductions result in emission increase somewhere else. Uh, we can Identify leakage in two ways. We can have a direct or activity leakage when we have the economic, the targeted economic agents redirect their activities uh, in another non accountable uh, boundary, which is what um, uh, the first speaker uh, discussed about. The other type of leakage we have is the market leakage. And this is happened when agents adjust their behavior uh, agents who are not targeted adjust the behavior based on what's happening somewhere else. So, for example, if we uh, reduce uh, wood because of uh, avoiding deforestation, this means that somewhere uh, price will be adjusted and the demand also uh, will adjust, but there will be demand in the matter, there will be shortages in the market, so uh, deforestation activities might happen somewhere else completely are related to that specific area by different agents. 
What is the, the main difference between the two types of leakouts? In the first type of leakouts, the direct leakouts, we can measure it. It's not easy, but we can measure it. Uh, we know what, uh, who are the agents and what are their actions. On the other hand side, regarding the market leakouts, this is not easy to be measured. Uh, and uh, market leakouts, as I said, operates through prices. So reduction of supply uh, because of uh, carbon offsets, let's say, or increase in supply because of carbon offsets will have an effect on prices, on market prices of that good, and that will uh, trigger the reaction of other suppliers somewhere else in the world. Uh, what is important to know, to, to, to understand here and to, to, to have in mind when designing uh, uh, efficient markets in order to address these leakage issues is that uh, the permanence and additionality issue mentioned before are interrelated to leakage. So here we can see how uh, avoiding emission and increasing sequestrations through carbon offset, especially the second one, will might uh, can have uh, leakage implications or implications regarding the permanent uh, the the time horizon of those uh, carbon reductions. Uh, so what affects carbon leakage? First of all is the existence of other substitute goods. So if I decrease the supply of a good in the market, if there are closed substitutes, uh, consumers will switch their consumption to those other goods. The demand elasticity and supply, this is how responsive is demand and supply to changes in market prices. And I will come to that in a while. So if let's say prices change by a percent of a 10% uh, point, the demand will change by more or by less in terms of percentage, uh, percentages from that 10%. And the final part which affects a lot carbon leakage is the carbon footprint of the activity in the targeted area versus the, uh, of the targeted versus the non-targeted area. So these leakage that increase activity somewhere else will result in higher uh, emissions, uh, higher carbon uh, releases or not. So what we are after, leakage will be low if the demand is elastic. So with respect to a change in price, we change our demand by a lot. Uh, or if there are no closed substitutes. So by decreasing the supply of a good, let's say by Avoiding deforestation, we decrease the supply of good in the market. If there is no closed substitutes, then this means there will not be that much of a change in supply in other goods around the world, uh, in other markets. So on the other hand, leak leakage will be high if the supply elasticity is high. So if uh, in reality, suppliers can change easily given the signals they are getting from the market regarding prices, how much they supply of the good. And um, if we have a lot of substitutes uh, and if the substitutes have higher carbon footprint, as we said before. So how we can address that leakage? First of all, by improving measurement, reporting and verification especially when it is in the direct leakage, where, which is the leakage we said that it's easily observable, uh, that can, uh, can help a lot in reducing leakage, uh, or at least know what, uh, what is the leakage. So another one, uh, Franz touched upon that, is that carbon offset should uh, adjust credit using the leakage estimates. What is the problem with that? Most leakage estimates right now are uh, low in terms of reliability or very high in terms of cost, or in order to be reliable, the cost is very high. So they are not very useful. Uh, for example, let's see here that the, we can uh, see, I mean, I, I will explain a bit the graph that an increase, uh, increased forest area protection has not led in reality to a reduction in forest 
uh, in forest cover loss. Uh, so the graph with blue dots is the uh, forest protection, while with the, uh, the annual forest protection, while with red is the uh, forest loss, the annual forest loss. So we see that forest loss exceeds the protection, despite the fact that every year we have some increased pro uh, so we do some pro progress in terms of protection. Why is that? It is possible that uh, protection activities and projects might alter the way we treat forest in the non-protected areas. Another, uh, another aspect is that the two are completely unrelated. So the fact that we protect forests in uh, one area is not related with how we treat forest in another area. Uh, and this might be due to increased demand, let's say, the, 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 the increased uh, reduction forest, uh, forest loss. In general, it is estimated that stop to harvest uh, by product generates about 70 to 80% leakage. And uh, afforestation, of course, uh, reports lower percentage of leakage compared to conservation project. So afforestation is estimated to be uh, lower, uh, up to 43%, while the conservation project are up to 92%. How we can fix them? By designing offset uh, uh, projects offset and the offset uh, uh, market in order to address simultaneously the three main issues, permanence, additionality, and the no leakage. How we can do that, uh, the, this is some guidelines. Uh, so we can have har carbon offset that should not be substituted for emission reductions uh, in compliance to existing policies and existing regulations, but they should be on top of that. So first we need to meet our targets based existing policies and then go to offsets. Uh, the other one is that uh, offset projects should be ranked based on their leakage risk. And uh, I think the suggestion of the of the authors, I have the, all the reference at the end, is that uh, all projects below uh, above 50% uh, leakage should be uh, put aside, should be restricted, or be used when there are other objectives to be met in that specific area. Uh, and the final one, uh, is usually leakage is reported in percentages and in uh, in ranges. When there is a range, we should always use the upper bound of that range. Other policies is the border carbon adjustment, can help but cannot provide a solution on its own. The one that is uh, probably more effective is to target on demand and target on consumers' behavior. That is one of the uh, actions that has the lowest emission leakage possible, because in reality, you are not restricting uh, supply, which can move to a different location, but you are changing the demand to a cleaner, uh, to a cleaner product, hopefully. And the other one, by increasing efficiency without affecting the output. That also is one of the uh, actions that is linked to lower emission leakage because exactly you do not change how much of the product you are uh, uh, you are supplying in the market, so there you are not creating a market shortage if you want of that project. Of that product. That's all for me. Th 